What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103 Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours and a bunch of amount to cover and some stuff have really been, you know, out there in these last 24 hours. Bare stuff confirmed, a lot of, you know, weird rumors, a lot of actual rumors, so we're going to cover it all, so let's get straight into it. So one of the breaking news over the past 24 hours was coming from Alfredo Martinez and Onda Theodou saying that the FC Barcelona presidential election will be held on the 24th of January 2021. I told you guys yesterday video, I predicted it, I said it's going to be on the 23rd or 24th of January. I predicted it and I told you guys, very, very predictable. You know why? Because Barcelona always do what everyone doesn't want them to do. It's, it's, I'm just speechless at this point. Like the fact that, are those two squids, right? The, the guy who's running Barcelona right now is probably Bart is Bartomeu's best friend. And it's been confirmed all over the news. And this man calls the election three days before the legal limit. Three days before the legal limit. Are you mad? Like seriously, you're gonna give the new president a week in the January trans window. And you're gonna give Messi a whole month to able to be able to talk to any club he wants to. Are you serious? What kind of poor management is this? First thing Carlos Tusquiz said when he was elected, I wanna call elections as early as possible. Yet you're doing it three days before the limit. Are you serious? Are, am, are you taking the piss? You're giving the new president a week to work with in the January transfer window. We're talking about all these Depay rumors, all this Garcia, all this bollocks. And just like, if you're not going to make any signings, then this squad's going to be dead. We're going to do this whole season without a proper number 9. We're going to do this whole season with Braithwaite as our sub as our backup number 9. It's just like, and you have Coleman here saying, Oh, I don't want Firpo. Oh, I don't want Alinea. Oh, I don't want Fernando. Blah, 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 blah. I don't like my squad. I have many doubts. You're calling the elections three days before the legal limit. If he would have said to do the elections on the 20th of January, that would have been over the limit. And they were like, no, you can't do that. 24th of January. Hasn't been confirmed by the club yet. It's only been confirmed by Alfredo Martinez and all the top sources around Barcelona at the moment. And it's just, I was so mad when this came out yesterday. And it's just, this is BS. I don't like to swear, right? But this is BS on the highest of levels. I bet you Bartomeu had the meeting with Tusquets like, yo. Let's, 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 let's just run this club as long as we can. So what I want you to do is call elections like a few days before the middle of it. That way you can do the wage cuts. That way you can, we can run the club a bit longer. All this man has to do is agree a wage cut with players, which he hasn't done yet. He, has to ex he had to extend it twice. And now he calls the elections three days before the legal limit. We need acquisitions in January. We need to bend some of this dead wood. And you're giving us a week to do it. Not even because the president, okay, the election is going to be 24th. He's going to be in the office 25th. Gotta get used to it on the 26th. He needs to, like, like. <sighs> this decision is very, very poor. Thank God we only, have to, we only have to, you know, go through this for another month. And then we can have a proper board in, whether it's Laporte or whether it's Font. I don't care. Speaking on that, we have some news coming in for the presidential candidates. Laporte looks like the favorite in the race. He has the biggest local fan base. Fonte has the support of the younger Sochis. So on the screen right now, you can see the other presidential candidates. Wouldn't look into any, like you, I wouldn't look into any of them. It's going to be between Laporte and Fort. Obviously, you can see Benedito. He did the emotional confidence back in 2017, which failed. Ferrer did the push of confidence now, which was successful, and which got Bartomeu to leave. He had some of Barcelona, well, you have the, the Rosad guy, Rosad, whatever you say his name, the former Bartomeu member. Get him in the bin. It's just, it's just going to be between Laporte and Fort. That's just let you guys know. Also, what you have on the screen right now is the duration of management committees in the 21st centuries. So let's see right here are the people who came in for a little bit until the new board came in, right? So you have back in twenty back in two thousand three, the management committee came in for forty days, and two thousand six came in for twenty seven days, twenty fifteen came in for thirty seven days, and now Carlos Tusquets has stayed as president for eighty eight days. That is double the record. Eighty eight days. Holy moly, man. I'm telling you what, guys, once January hits, these rumors are going to be flying in. Like, I already have beer news to talk about, but Two Squads literally came out two days ago saying that he, he won't make any signings. He'll leave it all for the new president. But he gave the president a week to make signings. A week. Like, I'm telling you right now, this is all Bartomeu's, this is all Bartomeu's mastermind plan, right? He told Two Squads, yeah, call it just really late so we can, you know, milk the club even longer. The club is on the verge of bankruptcy. This man, this old bastard, can't even agree wage cuts with the players. He, he, he went up to the players like, yo, 
We are this close to bankruptcy. I need you guys to cut your wages. You're gonna get your money back. Just cut them for now. And you can't even do that. Only positive side of this is that we only have to go through a month of this incompetence, in, uh, unmanageable team. But elections are on the 24th of January. It hasn't been confirmed by the club, so hopefully this is all wrong. But we all know Alfredo Martinez never gets it wrong. So elections 24th of January. If you guys think that story was bad, boy, have I got something for you. Guess who's back in the news, you know, international break, nothing to talk about. Guess who they put back in? That's right, Neymar Zito, back in the news. Apparently, he's suing Barcelona for 60 million of season bonuses, some bonus crap. And now Barcelona can't are suing him because they apparently calculated his transfer fee wrong. And they actually paid over 10 million more. Blah, 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 blah. Let me read it for you. The Brazilian demands Barcelona pay him about 60 million. Neymar has formalized an appeal against the sentence of the order him to return 7 million to Barca. He claims, he claims to order Barcelona to pay him the money of the sign-on bonus and other interesting things. I thought this was all settled like a, a year ago in the court. It looks like it's back again. And it's just whatever. Like at this point, Neymar, he's out of my memory now. You know, when he left, oh, yeah. I think that was the last time I probably cried. Because that was, oh, that hurt. But since um, Mundo Portivo, I believe, came out with this and oh, Barcelona are suing Neymar, Neymar's kind of suing. This is when sport comes in, you know, oh, we can sneak a little, 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 little Neymar story in here. Blap! Front cover of sport. Some of the presidential candidates with options of becoming the president of, cl of the club have probed the Brazilian star to know firsthand what his intentions are next summer. Neymar has no intention of expanding his contract linked with PSG. Despite the reports of France papers claiming that Neymar will renew with PSG, our sources confirmed that he has no intention of renewing with the Paris Saint-Germain and he is ready to do anything to return to Barcelona. The fact that sport are a Catalan-based outlet, their sources are so shite. Oh my god. This is why I don't look into anything about sport. Once, you know, the big man's coming, you know, your Alfredo Martinez, your Gerard Romero's, your Morales, once they come out, Mundo Bativa kind of backed him a bit, and then Sport come in last night. Every time we are about to sign a player, let's say, for example, also Junior Dest. Alfredo Martinez tweeted out, oh, we're about to sign Dest. Romero tweeted out, oh, we're about to sign Dest. The day before we signed Dest, Sport say, oh, yeah, we're about to sign Dest tomorrow. Woohoo. Sport as, a, like, a, like, they're so, so, so bad in news. And now they're saying, look at this, they're saying Neymar is dying to return to Barcelona. We can't even afford Memphis to pie, and you're telling me we're gonna we're gonna get Neymar for a hundred million. We're all, we, we're all on the verge of bankruptcy, and you're telling me we can we're gonna go get Neymar. All these presidential candidates, oh oh, we're gonna go sign Neymar. I bet you all these presidential candidates are not they're not Laporte and they're not fun. So that's all I managed to be. It's just and now they say look they also say Barcelona must sell Griezmann or Depelli for Neymar to return. Oh player swap. Oh, Neymar is possible, but if they give Griezmann plus 50 million, maybe throw in Umtiti, all oh, those bring back Rakitic, we can get them in the deal too. This club is a shambles, man. These, these news outlets just come in and just, they say anything they want to say. This is why sport are never, ever, ever reliable. There has not been one good source that came out saying that Neymar is coming. Alfred Martinez had to tweet out that, oh, Neymar, this is all these Neymar rumors are false. Because people started believing them. People are so gullible nowadays. Let me tell you guys this right now. If you see a new a new story and it says we started sport, disregard it completely. Absolutely disregard it. Because sport are the most irreliable source out there. You might be thinking to yourself, would I take Neymar back? To be honest with you, if he didn't, you know, sue the club, like right now I would say no, but if he didn't sue the club, he didn't do this, 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 I would take him back. I would swap him for Griezmann easily. Because Griezmann, Griezmann is a flop. He is. Right now, he's a flop. Hopefully, he'll change that. Right now, he's a flop. And you asked me if I would switch a flop for a world-class player that has done it at Barcelona? Hell yeah, I would. But I wouldn't bring him in. Because he's playing on that Ansu position. And it's just going to hinder Ansu's development. So I wouldn't bring back Neymar. Hell no. If you're telling me to switch him for Neymar, uh, for Griezmann? Hell yeah, I would. So the news comes from bad to worse. And we have more news about Ricky Puch. That's right. Goal come out saying Ricky Puch is falling behind. He ruled out Coleman's idea to have him leave on loan in the summer. And now he sees how Pedri has overtaken him even though he's four years younger. Ricky's situation is very particular. He had the contract until June 2021. So from January 1st, he will be able to negotiate with whoever he wants. Goal are really retarded. Because Barcelona have a two-year trigger extension for him. So... Disregard that completely. 
he hopes that he, he will give the priority to Barcelona as he always done because he wants to succeed in the ball ground of colors. The fact that Ricky Puch is not in this team, is not around the Barcelona setup, is not getting minutes. You know, we're uh, we've played a lot of games this season. We've played what? Eight in the league, three in the Champions League. That's like what, 12 games, 11 games? This man managed to get three minutes. Three minutes. And those three minutes were in a 1 1 draw against, I don't know, sorry, 1 0 loss against Hatafe in the last three minutes. He's like, yeah, Ricky, just, just go. Rick, we all. <sighs> Ricky Puch is the most talented midfielder at FC Barcelona, yet he is sitting on the bench. Let me say that one more time. Ricky Puch is the most talented midfielder in FC Barcelona, and he is sitting on the bench. If I would give advice to Ricky Puch, I would say to him, yo, just write it out, because as soon as Coleman gets set at the end of the season, you'll be a starter. It's getting to the point that I feel like Coleman's just doing this in spite. Just to, you know, say, oh, I don't want Ricky Puch, I want all this, I want all that. If you told Ronald Coleman, we want to do a, a, a player swap for Ricky Puch and Wijnaldo, Ronald Coleman would do it. He would. If I was the president, I'd go to him, just to, you know, a little test, you know? I'd test him out. Hey, uh, Ronald, I'm thinking of swapping Ricky Puch for Wijnaldo, what, what are your thoughts? Oh, yeah, 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 do it, do it, do it. Get sacked. It's like, I don't understand. He came out in his interview the other day. Oh, he has no physicality. Oh, he hasn't has a con good control, ball movement, blah, blah, blah. Are you watching me on the pitch or are you watching Ricky Puch? You not see him against Alaves last season. You not see him against Atletico Madrid this season. All those little opportunities he gets, he shines. You give Ansu a chance, he shines, and you keep him in. You haven't even given Ricky Puch a chance. Don't even get me started on Gonzalinia, who's sitting on the bench as well. And you're playing boost gets ahead of them. Like, oh, they don't switch into the 4 2 3 1 formation. I want to do double pivots when attacking. Then switch to a 4 3 3. You switch it up against Dynamo Kiev. If you don't tell me you don't want to play it, you just want to play your system. Our squad is built for the 4 3 3 system. And it's also built for the 4 2 3 1 system because we have two camps in the team. We have Coutinho and we have Pedri. And I'd rather play them at the cam position than out wide. But you can just play them as an interior midfielder. But I've already did that. At the start of the 2018-19 season, he had a midfield of Busquets, Rakitic, Coutinho, Dembele, Suarez, Messi. Dembele didn't perform. He put Coutinho on the wing and brought in Vidal. Don't, 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 make, don't tell me excuses about how Ricky Puch doesn't fit in this team. He does. You just don't want to play him. You just see a little, a little guy, not really built, and you don't think he's suitable for this team. He put Thomas Partey in his pocket. And that 2-2 draw last season. And now Thomas Partey got a 50 million move to Arsenal. He pocketed one of the best center mids in La Liga last season. And you're telling me he's not good enough. I think as soon as we get some injuries, hoping they're nothing serious, maybe a little two weeks out, once players start to unperform, I feel like Ricky may get his chance. Once he gets his chance, he'll shine. It's just me repeating myself over and over and over again. Oh, he's gonna shine, he's gonna shine, he's gonna shine. I feel like I'm a freaking robot by now. You get all these news about Ricky Puch. Coleman, give this man a chance. To end off this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the transfer rumors around Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Firstly, from AS, I wanna take it into, you know, as a reliable source because they're a Madrid based, based paper. Sorry, I'm mumbling there. Danny Almo is on the agenda of all presidential candidates as a priority signing. The possibility of returning to La Liga has been on the almost table for several occasions for two seasons. Of course, we all know Danny Almo, former La Masia player, did really, really well at uh, Dynamo Zagreb, I believe. We had the chance of signing him in January. Valverde didn't really fancy him, so that he went on to RB Leipzig. Would I take him back? I don't know, because he plays as a cam, right? He plays an attacking midfielder. We already have Coutinho and Pedri. I don't really know if he fits. I can, I'm going to be straight honest and that I've never seen him play before. I've heard people say that he has quality. He's, you know, fantastic talent. So I'm just going to leave this open up for debate in the comments below and let me know, because I have no idea. I'm being completely honest. Next one's coming in from Sport. And you heard me my rant about Sport, so I wouldn't take this into any consideration, but it's a viable topic. Martin Braithwaite is key to the Memphis Depay arrival in January. For the puzzle to fit in, the Danish striker must accept an exit to let in salaries for the club to be able to include Depay in a financial balance. Thanks, Sport, for letting everyone know what we already knew three months ago. Cheers for that. Next one's coming in from Mundo Deportivo, saying that Barcelona needs to finance the signing of Depay and Garcia with sales. That reduces the salary bill. The club is looking for ways out for Junior, Braithwaite, and Alinea without ruling out Dembele to be able to tackle the signs of Depay and Garcia in January. Why is Alinea and Dembele part of the conversation? I'll give you guys very simple math. One in, 
one out. One plus one is two, right? So one in, one out. Fernandez out, Mateus Fernandez out, loan, sell him, I don't care. The buy in. Math still works out. Second player, Braithwaite out, Eric Garcia in. That's two players out, two players in. If you want to be safe, if you want to make some more money, sell Firpo. I don't mind that. So that's three players out, two players in. Very simple. Why is Alinea on the chopping block? Why is Dembele on the chopping block? Dembele's been performing well. We have only two wingers in this. We only, we only have three natural wingers in the squad. Ansu Fati, Dembele, and three Cow. And you want to sell one of them? What are you going to do now? Set Griezmann back on the right wing? Come on now. Just get rid of Mateus Fernandez. Fear Pope, if you want some extra money, fine. And Martin Braithwaite. Bring in the pie. And Eric Garcia. Very simple. Now, here's another interesting story from Ben Dubertivo. The pie does not hide his desire to come to Barcelona. He already agreed to four year contract, blah, 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 blah. This is the most important thing. He will pressure Leon to accept an offer of five to six million in January, but Barcelona have to sell players first. I've been saying throughout this whole week that the pie is going to cost you five, uh, it's going to cost you 10 million. He's actually going to cost you five. Five to six million for the pie. Are you, are you guys mad? Are you mad? You're telling me you're going to sign a top player for five million. Five million. I guarantee you, if we made a GoFundMe, we can raise that five million. Like seriously, and you got some people tell me they wouldn't do it in in the in the comments. They wouldn't do the deal. If you sign him on a four-year contract, you pay five million, let's say plus one million add-ons, all that crap, right? So that's six million, four-year contract. His value is already up to thirty million. Let's say he flops, put him on the transfer list. Oh, Man United, do you want him? Oh, Leon, you want to take him back? Blah 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 blah. Hey, Ajax, you want him? Whatever. Sell him on for twenty million. You'll make profit anyways. It's a win-win situation. I don't understand why I got people in my comments telling me, "Oh, the pie's not up here, number nine. Blah blah blah. He's exactly the same player as Griezmann and Messi." The pie plays as a striker for Coleman in a Dutch team for two years during Memphis and Pie is prime. In his best years, he was playing striker at Lyon and in the Dutch team under Coleman. Yes, he can play on the wing. Yes, he can play in that second uh, striker position in that cam role. But he's going to be used as a number nine. He's going to be used as a striker. Whether he can play there or not, I don't care. Ansu Fati can play there as well. Nimbelli can play there as well. Anyway, like any forward can play there. But he's going to be, be brought in to play that specific position. Yes, we have injuries. He may stick him out on the wings. Blah, 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 blah. But for five million, you're telling me you're not going to do that deal. For five million. Come on. Come on now. You, you can't tell me you're that crazy. Five million for this deal, I'd do it any day of the week. I think if you, if, even if you sell Martin, Braithwaite has more value than the pie. I, think, I bet you any, I'll get, I'll bet you any money that West Ham or Everton will buy Braithwaite for 10 million. They would easily buy him for 10 million. That's half of what the pie is worth. And the pie is a hundred times the player he is. It's like, come on now, telling Braithwaite and Fernandez will easily fund the Garcia and the pie deals. Well, I don't know if the club are going to sell Fernandez. Probably going to send him out on loan because they still think, you know, he has quality, blah, 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 blah. Let's say you sell Junior for 20 million, Brave for 10 million, that's 30 million. Out of that 30 million, only, you only need 10 million to buy the Garcia and the Pie deals. You tell me you wouldn't do it. Come on now. So that's my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Leave your comments down below. We talked about a lot. Let me know about what you think about on the election days, Neymar's return, Ricky Puch not getting any minutes, and of course the, the Pie and Garcia deals. I reply to every single comment. We can get interactive in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. I got a little, you know, heated in this video. It's just like, it's all this BS just all exploding at once at me. And it's so, so annoying to see the club poorly run. And the fact that you and I as fans can easily run this club better than anyone else who has the experience. So, it's just terrible to see. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. <laughs>